as you and I have known it. Even so, it's our duty to wrench him, kicking and screaming, into what's left. All right, we can't wait for the doctor. He's probably been infected by now. Dearly beloved diary, today while picking through the library rubble, I discovered another play by Sartre. Hell is other people, he writes. I might agree if it weren't for his erroneous depiction of a turtle torment. Hell is not a drawing room. Those characters understood each other at least. 
they shared the yoke of misery. Here not one soul understands. Particularly not mother. She's always ignored me during my periods of doubt. Sometimes I wish, perhaps it's wrong to say this, I wish I had a different family altogether. But what's the use of writing? I'd be better off twiddling my thumbs. There are others like me. I've seen them. Is it barbarous to partake of their flesh? No. After all, I am hungry. My destiny lies not with the living, but the dead. Dead is, of course, a relative term. Once I conducted an experiment. Right there, Tacitus. Do not move.
Mother. Mother, please. I've already eaten, you old goat. I ought to annihilate her. Or myself. There can be no other solution to this cruel farce of life. We are wretches! We are a pathetic, decaying mass! Meaningless blights on this earth! But one reason to continue living, one final hope. But the damsel rejects my advances. Beatrice, favor me with a word. Is it like this in death's other kingdom? Waking alone, at the hour when we are trembling with tenderness. Lips that would kiss, form prayers to broken stone. No longer can I bear this torment.
long abandoned house, now occupied by the living. Her ruddy cheeks, her flaxen hair. What other mortal can compare to the maid I spied by the window there? Eyes like fire, bright as day. Small ears for hearing what I say. Quit your home and follow me. To live as my Persephone. His girl Judy were eaten as soon as they walked out the door yesterday. Them flesh hungry boogaloos up and ate them. It's a miracle you survived so long, son. They never ate me. You're a lucky man. Harry, give him a rest. Can't you see he's in a state of shock? All right, all right. Make yourself at home. I saw you. At the window. Those creatures didn't even notice you. I'm one of them. You don't act like you are. Because I'm alive. I've always lived amid the dead. How dreadful. Why didn't you tell the Coopers? If Mr. Cooper knew I could survive out there, he wouldn't have let me in. And I've so rarely had contact with people. 
like you. Tell me honestly, since you know best, what are our chances boarding up in here? We'll be eaten sooner or later by those... those creatures, won't we? Not at all. They're lumbering and oafish. Simply run away. They could never give rapid chase. I see. And if you must defend yourself, simply damage their brains or set them afire. But there are so many. Panic is a deadly instinct. It seems to attract them. Remain calm and obliterate them one by one. Focus on destroying their brains. Precisely. I'm glad you've arrived. It's been lonely with the Coopers. Sometimes I think that my whole life is... An absurd sorrow? Yes. I run and run. For what? To be devoured a few days later. I formerly thought as you do. But your life and mine have meaning. We shall transcend this chaos. Surely I dreamt today, or did I see, the winged psyche with awakened eyes. O oh, latest born and loveliest vision far of all Olympus's faded hierarchy. Fairer than Phoebe's sapphire region star, or Vesper, amorous glowworm of the sky. Hurry up, son! The Frankenstein's a busted in! We gotta go fend him off! Fear not, my good man. We must remain calm. Calm? Son, have you gone simple? Mr. Cooper, these are slow, awkward creatures. We'll escape if we pack our belongings and flee. You creepy little coward! Sometimes a man's gotta stand and fight! But your thrashings will draw them nearer. You're irritating me, boy! Death's dream kingdom will welcome you. Occupy your mind with pleasantries. Beatrice, why have I forsaken you? Life will be lived all the better if it has no meaning.